On the 17th of April this year, I rebuilt Bristol Rovers, and it turns out you guys really enjoyed that rebuild, so much so you wanted me to do Bristol City. Now, I haven't been able to do that team for numerous amounts of reasons up until this point. It is finally time to take a trip to Bristol City and make them the champions of Europe. In season one of this rebuild, we begin with 6.71 million in the bank. Them exclamation marks next to them players just, oh, put players in the right fucking positions. I think for the first time in a long time in a rebuild I've done, I'm going to stick with the formation that we're rocking with. So we are going to rock with the 3-4-1-2 in this rebuild. But best believe there's a lot of changes that are going to happen. And in that transfer window, believe me, we made some very good signings. Firstly, we sent out Casey Palmer, Harvey Wiles Richards, and Jada Silva all out on loan. We also did sell Cameron Pring for just over 1.7 million. But we brought in Dutch centre-back Sam Bukima for just just over 3 million. And my personal favourite sound of this transfer window, we have brought Yanis Hadji away from Rangers for only 7 million. And that leaves the team looking like this going into season one of this rebuild. And let me tell you something now, there's some freaking potential in this team. Let me run it through you with you very quickly. Scott, if we can get it right, has the potential to go 84 and even higher. sango has got a potential of 80, but I reckon we can get him a little bit higher. Yanis Hadji's got a potential of 82 or higher. And that's not to mention the rest of this team. To be fair, for the champion Championship. The standard in this team is ridiculous. I'm not expecting automatic promotion. That'll probably go to either West Brom or one of the other teams. However, we do stand a decent chance of making it to the playoffs at least this season with this team. We are currently halfway through season one and we are definitely in contention for promotion already. We're in the top six. We are in the top six by only one point, but we're still in the top six regardless. And to be fair, we're not exactly that far off first place Sheffield United. There's only seven points in. It's definitely going to make for an interesting interesting end to this season in the championship and this is how we got the team lining up going into the second half of this season in the championship we haven't done anything in that transfer window purely because we spent pretty much all of our money in the first transfer window mainly bringing in bloody Haji. and let me tell you something he has paid us back and then some he's almost 80 rated already this guy could improve like eight this season if he wanted to i'm pretty sure slightly disappointed in scott he's 68 rated he's 18 don't get me wrong but still i expected a little bit more growth but overall i'm really really can't knock how this team's performed, man. It's top six at the midway point in this season. We are on for promotion by the end of this season if we can keep going like that. So it's just a case of waiting to find out how we do at the end of this season. So we have arrived at the end of this season and we did make it quite comfortably into the playoffs in the end. We were fifth in the league. Sheffield United and Burnley went up automatically and to be fair, they ran away with it. They were 10 points clear of third place Watford in the end and in the playoffs, it is Watford, West Brom and Jarby and ourselves and Preston. And unfortunately, we didn't even make the playoff final because Preston North End will be joining Sheffield United and Burnley back in the Premier League. United beat the bottle jobs to win the FA Cup. They also battered Arsenal in the Carabao Cup final. Feyenoord won the Conference League. United got a treble and PSG beat Wolfsburg in the Champions League final. Why can we never ever get a team like Wolfsburg in the final? It's always someone ridiculous. Antoine Semenya is going to be a very good player for us in the next couple of seasons time. 75 rated, 22 goals, 6 assists in season 1. We got got Andreas Wyman, 74 rated, 17 goals, 11 assists. We've got Haji. Jesus Christ, this guy was a good signing. Only, I think it was like 8 million or something like that we got him for. Gone to 80 rated with 16 goals and 15 assists. If I'm being completely honest with you guys, I'm not too arsed about the fact we didn't get promotion. It gives us more time to build the team, to get it ready for the Premier League next season. Because with the team that we've got right now, and with the quality we're going to add on to it in the next transfer window, surely to God we've got to get promotion next season. We start season 2 in the Championship with just under 12 million in the bank. Now obviously, as you can see, a couple of players are on international duty the one position i'm gonna leave alone which may come as a surprise to you a lot is the central attacker midfielder scott i want him to be the end game player in this team from bristol city i think this season our main focus is bringing in a proper good left winger obviously odowda he's 70 rated he's not too bad he's 27 years old though and quite frankly speaking if we want to progress we've got to bring in more quality into the team to be honest everywhere else i'm actually really happy with so once we've done that i'm not too certain where to go next and in that transfer window we sold george tanner for 1.75 
1.5 million. And brought in Japanese winger Kaoru Mitoma for just over 7 million. And that does leave the team looking like this going into the second season in the championship with Bristol City. And do you know what? I'm going it now. We're going to get automatic promotion with this side. It's too goddamn good to stay in the championship any longer. If we don't get promoted automatically, we've at least got to do it by the playoffs. We are pretty much exactly where we were this time last season. We're in the playoffs. And to be fair, this time Southampton are running away with it at the top spot. But Palace, however, aren't. We do have a chance still for second place automatic promotion. But failing that, I still want to get promoted, regardless whether it's automatically or via the playoffs. We need promotion this season. And in that transfer window, we didn't have much money to work with, but we definitely made the most of it. We brought in Axel Twan to be on a free from Manchester United, so he will be joining us next season. And we also brought in Nathaniel Phillips for 5.9 million. And this leaves the team looking like this going into the second half of the season, and hopefully the season we get promotion to the Premier League, whether that be by playoffs or automatically, I don't care. I just don't want to stay in the championship with this team because it's far too good for the championship. By the way, I just want to point out, have you ever seen slower centre-backs at the three of the back formation and doing well at the same time? 60 pace for Bukimi, freaking 58 pace for Nathaniel Phillips and 59 pace for Atkinson. Did they chop off one of the legs or something? We've once again arrived at the end of the season and we are again in the playoffs. We finished fourth in the league this time. We were five points behind Crystal Palace, two points behind Watford, but two points ahead of Stoke City and Middles, but just about scraped the playoffs. Southampton and Palace did go up automatically and it is Watford ourselves, Stoke City and Middlesbrough in the playoffs. Thank God for that. We finally done it guys it took us two seasons but we finally got out of the championship honestly if we did make it out of the championship this season i'd have questioned myself as a fifa Karimo content creator city won the fa cup united won the carabao cup ajax won the conference league juve won the europa league united won the super cup and real madrid won the champions league wow andreas wyman jeez 32 goals 16 assists and 56 games but that's that's freaking impressive i'll give him that jesus christ Semenyo has got 21 goals, 9 assists. He's gone up to 80 rated as well. I can see this guy massively bursting outside of his potential. It's like, geez, I swear 80 is his potential already. And he's already reached it only two seasons in. This guy's definitely going to hit like 84, 85 rated. Haji, 84 rated. He's definitely gone past his potential. 18 goals, 8 assists. You've got Naki Wells as well. 12 goals, 3 assists from the subs bench. That's not too bad at all considering he's 33 and 66 rated. Matoma has gone up to 76 rated. Only bagged himself 7 Seven goals, three assists. It's it's not the best, is it? But we are finally in the big boy league, the Premier League next season. We're going to have to adjust very quickly because it's freaking ruthless, as you've seen in my previous rebuilds. We're definitely going to have more money in the budget to spend next season, but it isn't going to be massive amounts at the same time. We're definitely going to have to buy smart next season. Otherwise, it may be a very short tenure in the Premier League. And we start season through just over 37 million in the bank. Now, obviously, we're in the Premier League now, which means that we definitely need to firm up our back four, including the goalkeeper and our three centre-backs. To be honest, everywhere else is pretty decent. Obviously, we've got Palmer in the team, 71 rated definitely not our decent however we do have scott still out on loan whether i decide to bring him back for this season i'm not too sure but at the same time we definitely don't need any other players in that central attacking midfielder role we made some pretty important signings in that transfer window but for starters we've sent out saiku jenny awira edwards i'm in benarus and Kade gordon all out on loan obviously we did bring in Kade gordon on a free but we sent him straight back out on loan we then sold casey palmer for 1.9 million we brought in Josh De Silva for 12 million. And the most important signing of the window for me, we brought in Martin van der Voort for 22.5 million. And this is how the team looks after that transfer window has come to an end. Now, we've done some pretty big signings, bringing in van der Voort. We brought in Josh De Silva. We also brought in Kaide Gordon on a free, but we have sent him back out on loan just to see how he does. If he can improve quite well, we will make sure that you can find a way to put him into the starting 11. Now, in terms of how we're going to do this season, I think we're going to hold our own, but at the same time, we're definitely going to find it pretty difficult to survive this season and we can't forget the boy Haji 85 rated definitely going to be one of the MVPs of this season it's definitely going to be interesting where we find ourselves at the end of this campaign and we are halfway through the season and to be fair we're actually in a better position than I anticipated we're 15th in the league we are three points above the relegation zone obviously it's not ideal being only three points above the relegation zone but it's far better than being in the relegation zone but if you take a look at the teams in the bottom half with us the teams like Fulham, Wolves, Burnley, Leeds United, Brighton there's not too many points between 
between us. So in the next half of the season, you never know what could happen. And in that transfer window, we sold Sam Bukema for 6.1 million, then went on to sign Dale Fry for 11 million. And that leaves the team looking like this. He looks a little bit stronger defensively. Obviously, that is going to be the main priority of this team for the next couple of seasons until it's strong enough to leave alone. I can't lie to you. I'm ridiculously tempted to switch this formation up. I know that I said at the start of this rebuild that I was going to leave you to this, but I don't think it's complementing the talent we've got in this team. I'm just hoping by the end of this season, we're not dropping down back to the championship. Well, we definitely cut that one fine, didn't we? Jesus Christ. We were so close to getting relegated this year. I don't think I've ever been this close to getting relegated before in a rebuild. Luckily, though, West Ham had a far worse goal difference than us. We were above them by 11 points on goal difference. Therefore, we did survive just about the first season in the Premier League. And as you can see, it was Southampton Palace and West Ham who got relegated. And it was Manchester City who finished top of the table by quite a few points this season. Arsenal finished second with 79 points. Liverpool with 75. Chelsea with 75. Spurs finished fifth with 72 points. United with 68. Wolves beat Man City to win the FA Cup. Not really realistic, is it? Fiorentina won the Conference League. United won the Europa League. Juve won the Super Cup. And AC Milan beat Bayern Munich to win the Champions League. I think it's safe to say we can write this season off as a complete owl. We didn't really do anything of value in this season. It was literally all about survival. I did initially say at the start of the season I thought we could hold our own. How wrong could I have been? I have to admit, if people come in for Haji, I might have to accept that offer because because the money we could get for him could transform this team. But regardless, we need to do a hell of a lot better next season than we did this season. For whatever reason, my microphone cut out when I was recording the start of this season. But we started with just over 25 million. And here's what we did. We firstly sold Andreas Weimer for 10 and a half million. We then brought in Belotti and Mark Bartra, both on a free. We then signed Martin Dardé for 5 and a half million. We also included Mark Bartra as a part of that deal. And the big signing for this transfer winner, we brought in Wilfred Zorro half for 20 million and this is how the team's looking going into our second season in the premier league now i'll be honest with you this team looks a hell of a lot better all around the pitch the strikers are a lot better our midfield is a hell of a lot better our defense whilst it's probably the weakest part of the team it's definitely looking a hell of a lot better than it did this time last season and martin van der Voort definitely looks better however having said that i still don't think we're going to do that well this season we're definitely not going to finish 17th though i think the highest we'll probably get is about 14 maybe if we're really lucky 13th but we're going to be nowhere near 17th we are halfway through this season and we are pretty much smack bang exactly where we were this time last season it's not good to be honest we've remained stagnant we're not improving at all we're in the same spot as we were last season and quite frankly speaking it worries me a little bit and in that transfer window we sold Japanese winger Matoma for 18.2 million we sold Jay De Silva for 6.1 million we then brought in Dutch centre-back Nathan Ake for 19.9 .9 million and on top of that we got a job offer from manchester city which i'm going to politely decline and after all that this is how the team is looking going into the second half of our second season in the premier league and i think this team is finally starting to shape up to be a pretty standard team in the premier league now i'm torn on this guy he's 21 years old 76 rated i feel like if i got rid of him now then i'd get slated for not giving him enough of a chance however he is by a mile the weakest link in this team and quite frankly speaking, if we improved anywhere else, it'd be a disservice to that position purely because it's definitely going to be stronger than this position. So we're going to give him till the end of this season, see where we're at, and then we'll make a decision from there. But to be honest with the team looking how it is now, I reckon we could actually maybe get a mid-table finish. We've arrived at the end of the season and we have creeped up the ladder just a little bit. We didn't finish 17th this season, we finished 14th, a pretty respectable place to finish in the second season in the Premier League. West Brom, Bournemouth and Watford did get themselves relegated but the most important thing from this season is we have improved our position by the end of the season. On top of the league was Manchester United by two points, second place Man City 77 points, Spurs finished third with 72 points, Chelsea and Arsenal finished fourth and fifth with 71 points and Leicester City beat Liverpool to the top six by two points. Liverpool man was up with you this season. United won the FA Cup, West Brom beat Chelsea to win the cup but god this rebuild's wacky isn't it? Real Batiste won the Conference League, Juve won the Europa League, AC Milan beat United to win the Super Cup and this time it was Atletico Madrid to win the Champions League. Belotti turned out to be an incredible free agent signing 22 goals and 2 assists in 44 games 
with, let's be honest, a pretty average Premier League team. Antoine Semenyo, 85, rated at 25 years old, bagging himself 11 goals, 2 assists. Not really anything to shout about. Zaha's let me down a little bit. I thought that he wouldn't go down. I thought he might have crept up. It's a mistake that I've made. It is what it is. I'll sort that out next season. I'm in a bind here. I think if we sold Haji, it would solve all of our issues and we'd be on the up just like that. However, I feel like if I did that... It'd be cheating. So for now, we are going to keep him. But there's one thing that I am going to do. We are sending Alex Scott out on loan because, quite frankly speaking, he has let us down massively. He hasn't even grown this season. Like, he's got something special in him, granted. But if he's not grown an entire season at 21 years old, what is what more can you do? But we've looked at the downsides of this season. Let's look at the positives and outline them. We have improved the team massively this season. We have improved our position by the end of this season in the Premier League by massive amounts. If we can keep doing this for the the next couple of seasons will be in the Champions League in no time. This season, the board have given us a little bit more money to work with in just under 48 million. Like I said last season, we are loaning out Alex Scott and we are going to get a new central attacker midfielder. We're also going to look to bring in a new winger. I do have an idea on who I want to bring in as a winger. I may not have to spend any money and if you guys have been paying attention during this rebuild, you'll know exactly who I'm on about. That was hands down the most successful transfer window we've had yet in this rebuild. Firstly, we sent out Nathaniel Phillips and it won't show on here for whatever reason, but we also sent out Alex Scott on a loan deal as well. We also sold Wilfred Zaha for 20.3 million. On top of that, we bolstered our defence massively by bringing in Max Kilman for 33.5 million. And the big one, we brought in central attacking midfielder Jesus Ferreira for 36 million. And that transfer window leaves the team looking like this. Now, I'm telling you now, we are getting a top 10 finish this season. Now, we're giving Gordon the chance in the starting 11 and the left winger position. He's 20 years old. 78 rated already by the midway point this season hopefully he will have gone into the 80 rated margin i personally think we've done absolutely remarkable to get this team to looking like this from the past couple of seasons like when you remember what this team looked like two seasons ago and compare it to now it's unrecognizable but hopefully when we get to the midway point this season we will be in a decent position when i said to you guys we're going to do pretty well this season i did not expect this at all so we've gone from finishing 15 for the last two seasons at the midway point this season to being comfortably in the top six by the midway point this season. This is absolutely mad. And what's weird as well, Wolverhampton Wanderers are top of the league by four points. Man, this season's turning out to be crazy so far. You lot are going to laugh your asses off at who I've had to buy. We sold Axel Twansby for 13 million. We also sold Dale Fry for 13 million. And to bring in a little bit of squad depth, I cannot believe I'm about to say this, we had to bring in Harry Maguire for 17 million. And this is how the team loops going into the second half of this season. We've got a genuine shot at European football next year, whether that be Conference League, Europa League, Champions League. We are definitely in with a shot of it. Frankly speaking, if we didn't get it, I'd be absolutely gutted with how well we've done so far this season. We literally had it in the palm of our hands, guys. We were comfortable in the top six. And we choked it. We are bigger bottle jobs than Tottenham Hotspur. It is freaking official. Man City win the league quite comfortably in the end. Chelsea finished second. Same with Wolves pretty much. But the only thing that separated them was goal difference. Then it was Liverpool, Arsenal, United... And then it was, fr oh, I'm so annoyed, man. And in the bottom three, it was Burnley, Leicester City, and not, oh, hang on, Leicester City, holy shit. They had a bad season and a half, didn't they? City won the FA Cup, Liverpool won the Carabao Cup, Real Sociedad won the Conference League, Real Batiste won the Europa League, Juve won the Super Cup, and PSG this time were champions of Europe. Our front five this season actually really turned up. Semenyo, 87 rated, 20 goals, two assists, Belotti, 15 goals, no assists, Hadji, 13 goals, 11. 11 assists, Ferreira, 10 goals, 5 assists, Gordon, 8 goals, 3 assists. I would have expected a little bit more from Hadji and Gordon, in fairness. Ferreira did pretty decent for a cam. Belotti and Semenyo, I can't really complain at them. Belotti may have to be moved on, though. He's 32 years old, and I don't really want to take that risk again with what happened with Zaha. We may still have a chance of getting European football with the Conference League, but I'm not too sure. We are literally going to have to see what happens next season. But the fact of the matter is, we've definitely improved season after season after season, and we need to keep doing it. We begin this season with just over 51 million. And as you can see, some of the players are on international duty, but there's one player that I do need to get rid of, which is Bellotti. 
see it is time to say goodbye to him, cash in on him to bring in an even better striker. And then once we've done that, it is time to bring in a better defensive midfielder. Trust me, we did well on that transfer window. We sold Bellotti for 28.7 million. We once again sent Alex Scott out on loan. We brought Conrad Limer in for 33.5 million. On top of that, we brought in American striker Daryl Dyke for 35.6 million. And that leaves the team looking like this going into this season. And I'm telling you now, if we do not achieve top four with this team, I'm going to freaking scream. No weaknesses at all in this team. Everybody's improving like mad. It is looking freaking phenomenal. And I am expecting big things this season. And on top of that, we did qualify for European football last season. We are in the Conference League in Group F, joined by Galatasaray, Rosenborg, BK, and SK Sturmgrass. And it's got to be us in Galatasaray, aren't it? Surely. Were we really expecting anything less than this? Six games played, six wins, no draws, no losses, 18 points from 18. We absolutely dominated Group F. And we are also halfway through the season in the Premier League, and we are top six as it stands. And to be honest, I'm taking that with a pinch of salt because we all know what happened this time last season. And this is how the team looks going into the second half of the season. And let me just tell you something. If we don't get Champions League football next season, I am going to go nuts. Look at this team. How is this not going to get Champions League football? Like, just tell me how that's not possible. I also really want to win the Conference League. I want some silverware in this rebuild, and I'm pretty sure with this team we can do it. We have reached the end of this season, and we didn't actually choke the top six this time. We got it with five points to spare over Chelsea. And, oh, no, 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 no. This is all kinds of wrong. Arsenal. Arsenal won the Premier League. Nope, moving swiftly on. But before we move on, West Brom, Palace and Southampton did get relegated. West Brom and Jalby won the FA. Oh my God, that is a madness, you know. Liverpool won the Carabao Cup. We won the Europa Conference League. I knew, I knew we were going to do it, to be fair. Like the team that we have right now, if we didn't, we'd be asking serious questions about why we weren't doing it. But that does mean we're in the Europa League for next season. Athletic Bilbao won the Europa League. PSG won the Super Cup. And they also won the Champions League. Can we just appreciate Antoine Semenyo? 90 rated, 27 years old, 36 goals, 4 assists, 40 goal contributions in 55 games. That's just, that's mad, you know. You've also got Kaide Gordon, 87 rated at 22 years old, 23 goals, 6 assists, 56 games. Daryl Dyke got injured during the latter half of the season, but he still managed to get himself 22 goals and 2 assists this season. We have Jesus Ferreira, 86 rated with 12 goals, 14 assists. Hadji again, not really producing that many goals. I mean, he's best player in the team and he's getting 11 goals, 12 assists. That's pretty shocking to be fair. We are definitely making strides in the right direction. We are on the path towards the Champions League and if all goes well next season, we could be one more season away from qualifying for us. This season, to begin with, we've been given just under 60 million. Now, realistically speaking, everywhere in this team, you could argue doesn't need improving. However, what I want to do is bolster that back three as much as humanly possible to give us the best chance of qualifying for the Champions League this season. Then next season, I'll focus on other areas that do need improvement. But for now, that defensive back three is getting improved. We definitely bolstered the defense in that transfer window. The one and only signing we made was bringing in French centre-back Mohamed Simicam for 40 million. And this is how the team looks going into this season. And Daryl Dyke, man, I swear to God, this is the second injury he's had in the last six months. And this one's put him out for five weeks. So it's not all that bad, but it's still not ideal. We do have Semenyo up top, though. 90 rated Semenyo, so it shouldn't be too much of a bad thing. But the thing is, without Dyke, anyway, this team is ridiculous ridiculous in its own right and quite frankly speaking we're doing big things this season I think and we have qualified for the Europa League this season we're in Group G joined by Vittoria SC, FC Copenhagen and Bohemian FC and We've got to storm this one again, surely to God. We dominated the Conference League group stage and we dominated the Europa League group stage. We won four, drew two, lost none, 14 points out of possible 18, easily into the knockout stages. However, we're halfway through the season in the Premier League, 20 games in, and we are seventh in the league. And it's quite disappointing considering how well we're doing in Europe. I'm only hoping now we can do really well in Europe because I can't see us getting top four this season in the Prem. And in that transfer window, we brought in David Alba on a free, as well as 
bringing in Kaleta Kaur for 20 million, pretty much breaking our bank. And this is how the team looks going into the second half of this season. So I brought those two players in, David Alaba and Kaleta Kaur in for the squad depth that we are definitely going to need for next season. Obviously, David Alaba is going to decrease in overall by next season and maybe even the end of this season, to be honest. But that's why we've got Nathan Ake and Kaleta Kaur on the subs bench. The only thing we really need squad depth for now is maybe a winger and a striker. But to be honest, I think this team is more than ready for the Champions League. And if we don't get Champions League football for next season, I will be devastated. We have arrived at the end of this season and that is hands down the weirdest top four I have ever seen. Man City top of the table with 79 points. Everton second place with 72 points. Brighton third with 71 points. Bristol City 70 points on the board. Fourth place we finally done it guys we have finally done it i don't give a shit if we don't get champions league football or not we got top four this season in the bottom three this time was sheffield united leicester city hang on i swear leicester only just got back up as well chelsea won the fa cup i have really mixed feelings about this wolfsburg won the conference league and i think it's safe to say that regardless we are in the champions league next season come on it's about freaking time as well psg won the super cup again and barcelona won the champions league 80 rated Ferreira has definitely made a statement this season with 26 goals and 9 assists at 27 years old. Semenyo 91 rated, 23 goals 6 assists. I hope I'm doing you Bristol fans proud man, I swear to God. Daryl Dart with 22 goals, 1 assist. Hadji 15 goals, 9 assists. Gordon with 14 goals, 17 assists. It's just been a remarkable season, hasn't it, for our front 5. And with us finally qualifying for the Champions League next season, sure to God, our transfer budget is going to be a big number. The board have well and truly given us a lot of money to work with this time in 127.56 million and obviously all of the players are pretty much on international duty but there's one position i really want to improve and that's the goalkeeper apart from that maybe improve the striker option or bring in some squad depth but above all else i want a better keeper that transfer window was hands down the best one we've had yet in this rebuild firstly we brought in edison for only 24.6 million we then brought in uzman dembele for 46 million and we brought in german striker jonathan burkhart for 50 51.4 million. And this is how the team loots going into our very first season in the Champions League. The starting 11 is stacked. The subs bench is absolutely stacked. We are more than ready for the Champions League this season. And speaking of the Champions League, we are in Group F, joined by Leverkusen, Belonga, and FC Michland. And I don't really care what any of the teams are like. We surely to God have got to top this group. Six games played, six games won, 18 points from 18. We absolutely annihilated Group F. Don't get me wrong, there wasn't really much competition. It was by Leverkusen, Belogne, and also FC Michelin. None of them anywhere near our standard of play, really. But it is what it is. You've got to play what's in front of you. We are into the round of 16. And knowing my luck, we've drawn someone like Bayern Munich or freaking Liverpool now. We are up against... Oh freaking PSG. I knew I'd just jinxed myself. I absolutely freaking knew it. Saying that though, we're halfway through the season and we are absolutely killing it in the Premier League this time. We are four points clear at the top of the table. I'm taking this with a pinch of salt though because we are known for choking it after the halfway point. And this is the team going into the knockout stages of the Champions League. We didn't do anything in that transfer window because we did everything that we needed to do in the first transfer window of this season. Bringing in Edison, Ousmane Dembele and Burkhardt for that squad depth and to be honest i haven't thought about it even though we're playing psg i guarantee you now we make it through because quite frankly speaking look at this team for a monstrosity so here we are round of 16 away from home against psg in the first leg their team to be honest their front three of pulisic and bappe carrillo i mean pulisic will have a high potential in this career mode and bappe we all know and bappe's scum carrillo though i'm not entirely sure if he has a high potential or not in the midfield three there's not really many attack i mean you've got telemond who's a pretty good attacker hoiberg and gamerez i'm pretty sure they're defensive minded i mean they can attack as well but they're more defensive minded and you've got the back four of sorry marquinhos sinesi and hermoso and the majority of them have got to be aging at this point and then you've got donnarumma in goal who is going to be absolutely scum but the time for talking is over we're going to get into this game and we're going to see if bristol city oh Every single time we draw it, why can't we never get a definitive win in the first leg? There's a couple of things to take into consideration regardless of the results. So whether we lose this game, we probably just lost to the best team in this entire goddamn competition. But on the flip side of things, if we win and knock out PSG, we are probably just knocked out the biggest threat to our chances given the entirety of the way in this competition. So with that being said, we are going to get straight into this game. One all on aggregate. Can we make... Come on! Get in there, Bristol. 
Bristol City. Semenyo and Ferreira gained them two goals that we desperately needed to knock out probably the biggest threat to our chances of winning this entire goddamn thing. Now, RB Leipzig aren't on the level that PSG are on. Let's be completely transparent about that fact. However, that does not mean for a second we can take them lightly. Let's just take a look at their team, for example. They're rocking with a 3-4-2-1. Marlin up top with Raspadorian and Kunku on the wings with Bailey, Ayala, De La Vega and Angelino in the midfield. The back three of Hinchape, Mancini, Lacroix with Dean Henderson in goal. It's a decent team. It's actually a really good team, but it's a bit all over the place. I mean, Pedro De La Vega does not play centre midfielder at all. He's a winger. But that's their problem, not mine. We are going to get into this game and I'm pretty sure we can get a good result here. There we go. Semenyo coming up with the goods once again, gain us that 1-0 advantage going into the second leg of the quarters. A draw will do it. A draw will do pretty damn nicely, but I don't want to draw. I want us to win. I want us to win convincingly. I want us to go in and wipe the floor with Leipzig. Not quite what I was after, but we still win 2-1. De La Vega in the 4th, Ferrer in the 37th, and Dyke in the 68th. We'll make it 2-1 on the night. 3-1 overall. We are into the semi-finals. So we got from French Giants to a German team that is definitely making their way to becoming a giant in the German league to an already established Italian giant in AC Milan. We are away from home in the first leg at the San Siro. Their team is a 4-2-3-1 wide. They are rocking with Cunha up top. We've got Nat. Oh my God, they've got Garnaccio on the wing. I don't I don't know what rating he'd actually be. I mean, he's got high potential, but I'm not too sure what rating he'd be. You've got Sandro Tonelli and Aaron Barry as the holding midfielders. You've got Cucurella, Lee Norman, Vencedor, Hernandez, and my nan in goal. I'd actually argue our team's a little bit better, but let's find out if I am right. We're away from home, as I've just mentioned. We'll take a 1-0 lead going into the second leg. We are one game away from potentially getting into the Champions League final. AC Milan have got all the work to do in this game. They're the ones chasing the game. We can just kind of coast this and go for a draw but quite frankly speaking i don't want to draw i want a win i want a solid convincing win so let's see if we can let's go we are into the champions league final we will add my hand in the 34th for their goal ferrer in the 43rd and again in the 76th to get a brace in the semi-finals to get us into the champions league final it is about goddamn time as well and on the 26th of may 2029 it will be barcelona versus bristol city in the champions league final and let me tell you something that's a sentence i never thought i'd say now at this stage in the game normally barcelona's team isn't that good but you never quite Right, no, we're going to have to wait and find out what their team actually looks like. But before we get into that, let's see how we've done elsewhere this season. It's safe to say we are freaking smashed it in the Premier League this time. We're champions. We are first place. We did it by one point, beating Liverpool to the top spot. Liverpool finished second with 77 points. Then Man City with 72 points. Spurs with 65 points. United with 65 points. Wolves with 64 points. And this is making me nervous. Where are Chelsea? Where are Chelsea? Chelsea, man, what are you doing? In the bottom three this time were Burnley, Southampton and Notts Forest. We also ended up winning the FA Cup. We also beat the ball jobs to win the Carabao Cup. Now, if we win the Champions League, we could do the quadruple. That's something Liverpool couldn't do in real life. Chelsea won the Conference League. Lyon won the Europa League. Oh, so we played against Barca earlier this season and lost 2-1. So, I mean, would you say that they've got the advantage or not? What a team, man. Semenyo, 93 rated, 38 goals six assists. I swear to God, I hope you guys are proud of me for getting him to the final and getting him as good as he actually is. Jesus Ferreira, 89 rated, 35 goals, 16 assists from the camera. What a legend. 15 goals, one assist for Daryl Dyke, 86 rated at the end of this season. Kaide Gordon, 93 rated. We got him on a free as well, 15 goals, nine assists. Hadji, very, to be fair, he hasn't really done that well stats. In, in terms of overall, he's been phenomenal the entirety of this rebuild. However, he's definitely not been there when it comes to stats, has he? But regardless, we are on for the quadruple. If we beat Barca in the last game of the season, we have accomplished something we've never accomplished before, the quadruple. Masengo, you absolute bonehead. How are you going to get yourself suspended, man? I really wanted him to get to the freaking final and play it with him as well, man. He's been there from day one. You absolute tit. But Barcelona's team. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Got Torres, Mas, Sinistera as the front three. They've got Mason Mount, De Jong, and Sanz as the middle three. Then you've got Sardala, Santos, De Ligt, and Hakimi as the back four and with Testegen in goal. 
I'll be honest with you, most of them have got to be regens because I don't know half of that freaking team. It's going to be interesting to see how we can play with the three at the back formation because I'm not really very fond of the three back because you guys know how easy it is to just split apart like the River Nile. But without further ado, I'm ready, you're ready, and it is time to get into the game. It is Barcelona versus Bristol City in the Olympic Stadion in the Champions League final. It took us nine long seasons to get to the Champions League final, and I don't intend on making it the first final where we lose. Oh my God, it's in a late... Semenyo, Semenyo, Semenyo. That's an open header. That's a goal. That should be a goal every day of the week, twice on freaking Sunday. I'd expect Eddie Nketiah to do something like that. Rara to Haji Haji is on the ball. He's got the pace. He's up against Sardala. He's found Dark in the box. Can he find him once again? He can die. Oh, this is beautiful. <sighs> we missed the chance. We missed that chance so badly there. We need to move this ball around a bit quicker in Barcelona's final third, man. Oh, my God. See, this is why I don't like the three of the back formation. I'm not used to it. It's a shit formation. It's literally three. Oh, oh no, 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 no. I hate this formation. 4-2-3-1s and 4-3-3s are the way to go. I will have no discussion about this because I'm fucking right. Haji. He's up. Oh, he's in behind. That's beautiful. First time. And just like that. Just like that. We make it one all. That lead lasted about as long as Spurs' chances in the Champions League final against Liverpool. Three minutes later, game on. Haji. He's oh, okay. Semenya. Oh, look at that. Oh. I see that run. I see... Go on. Go on. Oh, you lucky bastard. Wait, what? What was that? What? There's no way that that was a foul because I went for it. Surely to God. No. These... I tell you what, these refs are shit, man. FIFA 23 better be better refs than this. Oh, look at this. Look at this for play. Hadji's in behind. Hadji's in behind. Once again... So 
to Stegen, man. You're not that good. You're just not that good, are you? Right, Haji with a good ball. Oh, this could be very good. Oh, he's... Our team isn't big enough for that type of stuff, is he? Gordon. Semenyo. Semenyo's still got the ball even after it was intercepted. Semenyo's inside. He's found for... Oh, this has got to be in. Oh, look at that. You see, th this is the thing. Attacking-wise, the three in the back formation is phenomenal. It's just when it comes to defending, it's so hit and miss. Because you could be under the counter-attack, and you could only have, like, three defenders against five attackers. And just like that, we're 2-0 up. I am loving our attacking in this formation. But the defending, not so much. See, this is what I mean. Look at look at this. Oh, thank you. That time, we actually defended pretty well. In oh, look at... Thank God for that. I'm t I think I'm a bit too negative with this formation, in fairness. I mean, I don't really give it a chance, but we do see Dart making that running behind. The g oh, my God, he's a fucking machine. And he's just made... Oh. Attacking-wise, this formation is the dog's bollocks, but defending is so... You have to be really good at defending to use the three at the back formation. It's so easy to score against. What a ball from freaking Ferreira, and what a goal from Dyke, man. He's so big and so strong, you can't really touch him. And we're most likely going to go into the half-time break. Oh, my God. We may even get a fourth before the half-time break. Oh, my God, please. Go on. Go on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, we didn't play that right at all, did we? We had so many options and we chose the one wrong one. We've got Gordon the ball here. Oh, my God. We can make this four here. This formation is ridiculous when it comes to attacking. 4-1 up on the stroke of half time. 4-1, guys. 4-1. And like I've just said, guys, we're going to the off-time break. 4-1 up against Barcelona. I can actually see us bagging like four or five more in this second half. If, if Barcelona aren't careful, at least. Anyway, hang on. I can see he's bagging one here. Daryl Dyke. He's on the right side of the defender. He's found Hadji first. Oh, he didn't get all of it behind it, did he? He didn't connect fully with it. Oh, that's a shame, man. This is where we can be exposed. This is... Oh, oh wait. How did that... How did that get through, man? When you tackle someone, you're supposed to actually tackle them, not tackle thin air. I hope the replay shows that. Right, okay, so I'm controlling him here. How did... How does that get through that? And Barcelona have had a pretty goddamn good start to the second half, man. If we can see two more goals before we score, this could end very badly. This could end really badly, actually. But we've got Adji on the ball. There's no one with him, though. Look at this. Right, we've got De Silva here. The Silva's been an unsung hero, to be fair, in terms of squad depth in this rebuild. We've got Pereira. Oh, Ferreira, sorry. We've got Dyke once again, and he gets blocked. Add that away. Good, lad. Right, now we need to pressure him. Get them. We need to pressure him. Where's the pr where's the pressure? There's no pressure. Guys, we're going to concede if we ain't careful. We are at oh, no. We're going to concede. Oh, no. Edison, man, I swear to God, best 20 odd million I've ever spent. Oh, oh Edison, look at that for a guy there. And we could actually hit him on the counter attack here. Semenyo is up on his own. Why can you. Oh, thank God for that. Okay, Gordon. Oh, my God. Gordon, he's found. Boys, this is going to be 5 fucking 2 here. If we... This is 5 2. <laughs> it's that easy. It is that easy. What a ball that was, though. In Ferreira. He's never missing from there, is he? And we can relax again with three goals up against Barcelona. 5-2 in the final. We, we can coast this. Right, we've got Hadji on the ball. Right, a 1-2 could be on here for Hadji. Oh, we've, it's not the 1-2 that we wanted, but it might still work. Right, we can... Oh, we've got Pereira. Oh, what, oh that would have worked so well if it would have freaking connected me to Gordon earlier. We got it to Dyke. Dyke, he's found Semenyo. Semenyo, oh, he's just taking him on like it's nothing and... It's just that easy. We well and truly have built an absolute monster in Bristol City. I mean, I thought we did well with Bristol Rovers, but Bristol City, man. Let's have a run with Gordon. Let's have a run. He's got so much energy as well. And I'm telling nobody's catching Gordon. Nobody's going to catch. Oh, look at this. We're going to dink this. How did we mess that up so badly? We want Ferreira to get his... Oh, he's coming. Oh, and there it is. I think that's his hat trick anyway. I could be wrong. 7-2, man. 7-2. And he's just walked through a banner. Pretty much the 90th minute. 7-2 up. I mean, should we go for the 8th? Make it 8-2? I mean, I think we should, you know. I think we should. And we're going to... Oh, my God. We're actually going to do it. We're actually going to do it. Oh, Barcelona, you spoil sports. And there is the full-time whistle. And in exceptionally convincing fashion, 
we have won the Champions League final 7-2 against Barcelona, cementing ourselves as the best team in the world. And the best part about that, I am almost certain there was a couple of players from the original team way back when in season one that played in that Champions League final and even contributed to a couple of goals. But if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, smash the hell out of that subscribe button if you are new around here, turn that notification bell and so you never miss a video I upload. We are on the road right now to 6,000 subscribers and the like goal for today's video is 250 likes. If we can hit that, that would be incredible. I just want to note as well, any teams that have been requested that don't get done in FIFA 22 will be done next FIFA. That is all from me. It's been your boy Gordon. Hope you guys have an amazing afternoon and until next time, I'll see you later.